Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name is John McDonald, and today we're going to make an arrangement using some materials that I actually found when I was on holiday, and that's these beautiful coconut spathes. Now, I saw these, they were lying on the ground. They're basically completely dried, uh, so it wasn't like picking up fresh plant material or causing any problems by doing that, but I just love these. They've got such interesting colours and shapes and uh, I got three of them. So we're going to use these. We're going to use a simple container and a pin holder for our mechanic. And our flowers today are really just going to be some lovely little tulips. Now these are the type of tulips you can just buy in the supermarket. They're nothing special, uh, so they're good value. And I've got a little bit of Burginia and a little bit of Fatsia as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide which pin holder to use. Now, I'm slightly tempted to... Hmm, let me have a real look. These are going to be quite heavy. So what we need to do is uh, basically maybe use a little bit of a counterweight uh, on our base. So I'm going to put that. So we're going to use this one as our main one and this one as a counterweight. So the first thing we're going to do is decide how we want to do this. So I really want this to be a front facing arrangement. So this would be ideal for going on like a sideboard. Um, and we're going to be able to view it from that front. So, we'll give this a nice clean cut. This, I just think, has got amazing interest. Now, you could actually make an arrangement like this with just dried materials. Uh, that could be quite interesting. Um, and it, it just means that you don't necessarily need to have always fresh flowers. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to use the leaves in different ways. So if we just have them all facing the front, it's going to look a little bit boring. Uh, I think having one or two or one of them definitely going to the back uh, or facing the, to show the back. It just shows another aspect of the leaves, which makes the whole thing much more interesting. So straight away, we've got, this is really our kind of focal point, but this is giving us a contrast, showing us a different texture, but we're keeping the line in the same way. And then this one is just really interesting. I'm giving these a little bit of a cut just because I've used them before on the pin holder and uh, it kind of <laughs> starts to weaken the stem. If you want to keep them long, long term, then what you can do is you can use, uh, create a false stem. So essentially what we've got here is we've created a lot of movement with the diagonal, but there's a lot of interest and, uh, you know, interest and form in this. In fact, it's quite sculptural. So now what we're going to do is just see if that actually balances, which it does. I might be able to get away with it. So we'll see. We'll play this by ear if we need the weight. Maybe by adding the other materials we might not need. So I'm going to add some water to our container. And when you're using a pin holder, you want the water to come up over the pins. If everything is secured into the pins, then you really don't need to, uh, to worry about things getting a source of water. They're gonna get that as long as they're on the pins. So let's have a little look. I'm wanting to keep it that I've still got access to the pins for my actual flowers, which is important. Now, leaves-wise, 
I've got some beautiful Burginia and this was in my garden. It's just looking really nice at the moment and uh, we'll pop them in as a little bit of a contrast basically to our flowers. So because these are going to sit lower down and more to the edge, we'll just put them in first before the flowers. What you'll find is it becomes a little bit more difficult to place things or to place foliage like this after you've put the flowers in. So essentially what we're doing with our foliage and our uh, dried material is creating a framework. And this is really gonna showcase our flowers. So I think we've got a nice asymmetry. This is giving a little bit of visual weight down lower, uh, which is helping to balance this so it doesn't just look like it's gonna fall over. And now we can play with our tulips. So we have to really decide what we want to do. Do we want to go big or do we want to go short? And uh, this is where you can really take your time and enjoy the process. So we've got a lovely framework. Part of the fun of creating a design, especially something like this, which is probably for yourself, is to just enjoy it. So don't think that you have to do this quickly, uh, that you have to do it in a certain way. Um, basically, just you really enjoy each material, looking to see what line it has and how best to place it. Now I would like these to kind of mirror the line that we've got. So, Let's try and find tulips that actually do that. So like this one here is going to mirror that quite nicely. And you're just pushing your flowers onto your pins and then just pull it to the angle that you wish. This one I quite like, just actually like this. Now one of the other things as well is you want to think about where you're going to place this. So that will really uh, inform how you're going to place your flowers into the actual design. I think as well what is quite interesting is we've got a lot of um, rhythm and movement in our dried material and we, we're getting that in the tulips as well. They've all got curves and shapes that kind of mirror that. So we're going to make use of that. So the danger with uh, using these was that we might have made something that's really quite flat. But what we can do is we can really bring in some depth. So when you see it from the side, uh, it really isn't flat. It isn't in one dimension. Uh, and how we place the flowers is really going to help that. So we've really got a line of flowers coming through. But if we just bring one more to the back now, um, we can actually improve or emphasize that um, sense of depth just because your eye will be taken through by that and uh, as we see that further back 
it's giving it depth. Now, I just want to adjust this, bring this forward. Because really we don't want to see the pins particularly. There are different ways that you can help hide the pins. We could do that with some stones or we could do that uh, with foliage like these leaves. The other thing as well is this leaf and this material is hiding our pin holder, which is just perfect. If we were worried about it, we could even use uh, like a little leaf like this. So I can bring this into here and that is also helping just hide that pin holder and create a little bit of a little bit more finish so let's just do this here now this one doesn't really work because it's too much on level with this flower here what we really want is to have one up here or else go very low down but uh, going very low down is going to look a little bit odd or a little bit unnatural so we can just do this i think it just needs a little bit of something in there yeah and this is really good because this has really got interest and if we want we could maybe just add you in there now what i love about tulips is they just do their own thing so Wherever I place this, it's going to start changing. It's going to start growing. Uh, photo, um, the tulips are basically photosensitive, so they're going to grow towards the light. So if we place it and there's a strong light from this direction, everything will start to go that way. If it was from that direction, they'll go that way. And if it's to the front, they'll tend to go to the front. So if you want to have an arrangement like this that doesn't really change, you want to keep it in a room that's basically dark. Uh, or the shutters are closed and then it won't really grow because there's no light for it to grow to. But I hope this just shows you how simple it is to create quite a stunning design with some very simple elements. We've got the dried materials and a few pieces of uh, foliage just giving us some really uh, strong design but also a nice frame to really showcase these flowers. The punchiness of the colour and the 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 fact that the flowers also mirror the lines that are in the other materials just makes a very nice uh, design as in it all blends very well together. So we've got a slightly sculptural, slightly minimal uh, arrangement just using literally one bunch of uh, seven tulips that you could get at any time uh, just now from like a supermarket or that. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on flowers to actually have a go. And if you don't have a pin holder, keep a lookout for them in, you know, your kind of thrift stores or charity shops. Or better still, just buy one because uh, they're, they're not good if they're the copper ones uh, or they're not cheap if they're the copper ones, but they're really good quality. And it's an investment that's worth having because you'll have that for years. I would definitely recommend buying one that's a good size with a good length of pin and then you're able to use heavier materials like this. So there we go, we've got our simple um, spring design uh, using some beautiful tulips that I got in the supermarket. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have and you haven't already done so, click here to subscribe. We'd really love you to join us regularly for all our designs. Every week we have a new video and uh, we really look forward to seeing you for our next one. So until then, take care and we'll see you soon.